and in today's video we're gonna be talking about all the color matching techniques that you need to create amazing photo manipulations on your own so let's dive in so recently i've been getting a lot of messages on how i color match the subject with my background and i decided to make a video on it just to show you all the techniques you need to do this and of course there's gonna be a thousands of different tips and tricks and techniques on how to color match different subjects with different backgrounds give us the color matching tutorial you prick but these are going to be the most useful and the most essential things you need to learn and in 99.99% .99 of the times you're not going to need anything else now i need to mention that color matching is not a one step thing it's a process with each layer that you add to your image it is going to blend even more and more with the background so keep that in mind and in today's video i'm going to show you the techniques that i personally use for color matching they are the best ones out there and these techniques are the ones that the most professional photoshop artists use in their everyday projects 100 percent proven to work and i know this might sound cliche but after all it all comes down to practice so let's dive in Here's my first example and I chose this because there was a pretty obvious color shift between the background and the subject and I thought it could be a really great example to show you how to really change the colors and uh, you can clearly see what happens. So here in this image I have a pretty dope futuristic kind of blue tone background and I've got the model here in the foreground which happens to be me very surprisingly. And the most important thing is that if you are trying to match the colors without matching the light values you are mistaken if we want to match the colors first we have to match the values and then move on to the colors this is just how it all works out so first we need to match the values so let's do that and whenever I want to match the values or colors I use something called the check layer and if you have not watched my video on check layers make sure to watch it I'm gonna put the link in the description watch that one first and then get back over here and the type of check layer that we're gonna use for the values is just simply a black solid color and I'm gonna put it on color blend mode now the image has turned black and white and all you are seeing now is value and this is gonna help us a lot in order to match the light values and to actually match the light values you can use any adjustment layers I tend to use curves because they are so powerful you can use levels Feel free to use anything that you're comfortable with but I highly recommend if you are starting out just get used to curves because there's so much more that you can do with curves than just levels and levels are just a little too simple and too lame but anyway just use anything that makes you feel comfortable and let's get to matching these colors you can clearly see that I have so much more contrast in the background so we're gonna drop my contrast down by simply dragging this endpoint up and this point slightly to the left and and it makes my highlights look brighter and it also brings down my contrast let me stop here a little if you don't know how to use curves you better just watch a tutorial on curves and then come back to this because that's the foundation if you don't know how curves function you need to learn that first and there are a ton of videos on that on YouTube learn how to use curves and then get back to this and just simple as that I have matched my light with the light of the background did you think it would be this easy sometimes it's this fast and quick but anyways i've got my lights matched here's the before here's the after now we have the permission to start matching the colors and of course you can just play around with the opacity to get more of a natural effect and for colors we're also going to use a check layer and the check layer is again another solid color but this time it is going to be 50% gray and the hex code for 50% gray is going to be 808080 just simply type in 808080 hit ok and change the blend mode to luminosity now all you are looking at are color can you see the colors if not just drop a curves on top and create something like this now you can clearly see what's going on now let me zoom in a little bit We've got some green going on in here of course because I'm wearing a green shirt and I have a lot of red in my skin tone which is not good so let's fix that. I'm going to drop a curves again and I'm going to clip it to myself and start changing my colors using the R, G and B channels. And let me rename this so you know what they're for. So first we match the light and now we're going to match the colors. I want to decrease the red in my skin because I'm looking like Hellboy. So I'm going to the red channel and just simply decrease the reds. And also I need more blue because my background is blue. 
and I'm going to increase the blues in my blue channel and here's the before and we can also decrease the red a little more here's the before here's the after look at that change I have a whole lot more blue in my skin which represents the color of the background and I think now I can turn off my check layers just to show you the before and the after you can see it already matched a whole lot more with the background I went from a warm tone to a cool tone which is exactly what I wanted so that's basically the process which you have to go through every time you want to match the color of a subject with the background after we match the basic colors of the subject with the background it's time to match the ambient color of the subject with the ambient color of the environment and if you don't know what ambient color is no worries just follow me and I'll show you how to do that very easy so just create a new layer and clip it to your model and get a soft round brush with a decent flow somewhere about 10 15 or I usually go below 10 and we're gonna change the blend mode of the layer to soft light and we are going to sample colors from the background and start painting on the model and here's the thing to keep in mind if i want to start painting on the top left of the model then i'm going to sample a color from the top left of the background if i want to paint on the bottom right of the subject then i'm going to sample a color from the bottom right of the background and this is the rule you have to keep in mind when you are trying to paint ambient light or color on the subject so sample a color of the background from a nearby area and start painting on the subject until you have fully covered your subject in background colors and then after that you can see what a difference it makes just look at that and how much more the subject is now blended in with the background and this is one of the best techniques to match the color of any subject with any environment and i hope you actually enjoyed this tip Here we have my second example and I've got three groups. One of them is my background, one of them is all these foreground layers on top and one of the layers is me or the subject which we are trying to match the color of with the color of the background. So let's start. As always, in order to match the colors, first we need to match the light. So we need a check layer to see the values and you already know what to do just create a solid make it black and put the blend mode to color and you will be able to see the photo in black and white and just by taking a quick look you can see how much darker I am and how much more contrast I've got in comparison to the background and here's another cool tip zoom out a lot so as you can see I'm on 4% zoom right now and when you zoom out a lot you can see the values even without the distraction of the details so you can clearly see what's going on and I'm gonna create a curves clip it to myself and start tweaking these around to match my color with that of the background I'm dropping down my contrast and just by doing that simply now I am a whole lot more matching with the background again I'm just constantly zooming back and forth just so that I can see the image without the distraction of details. It's a really useful practice, just zoom out a lot and then zoom back in and take a look at the image. After we've matched the light, we're gonna match the colors and now let's create the check layer which is a 50% gray set to luminosity blend mode and this is for seeing the colors and let's just drop a curves and create an S curve just to increase the contrast so that we can see what's going on with the colors. This is an image now without any value which means if you take out any brightness or any value out of this photo then this is what's gonna be left pure color you are now looking at pure color without any value distraction and this is gonna help you to match the colors way more precise and better obviously you can see that the background is more towards the green side and the subject is more towards the magenta and the red side so there's a huge difference going on and we need to fix that and then again you can use any adjustment layer that you feel comfortable with you can use hue saturation color balance or even levels but I always use curves since they are so powerful and there's so much you can do with them so I'm dropping the curves and clipping it to the 
model, I'm going to the greens channel and I'm going to increase the greens until I feel like the subject is matched with the background, something like that. And you can create as many points as you want on the curves and you can even change the position of these points using the arrow keys on the keyboard. So with this top, down, left and right keys on the keyboard, you can just very precisely adjust these points and match the color just like that. Take a look before and after, it seems like the subject is quite matched with the background. If I turn off the check layers, you can see that it's pretty much done before and after. Now it's matching a whole lot more with the background and then after that with the check layers off you can keep on adjusting and tweaking these points to get the best results. And if uh, the skin tone looks weird like this, like I feel like the skin tone is so greenish, you can just uh, paint on the mask with a black color just to remove the effects from some certain areas. I'm just removing the effects from the face a little bit just to give it a little more natural look because anyway. And the skin tone needs to be a little more red than the other parts, right? And just like the previous example, after matching the foundation of colors, which is the base color, we need to match the ambient color or the ambient light. And I'm gonna show you another cool way. Just get a duplicate of your background with hitting Ctrl J and then get your duplicate and bring it on top of your subject and then clip it to your subject. So I have duplicated my background and I have rasterized it because it does not need to be a smart object to do this. Just duplicate it, clip it to the model and rasterize that. As you can see, I have clipped it to the model now and I'm going to add some Gaussian blur to this to some extreme levels. So head over to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and increase the blur up to 100, 200, 300. It depends on the resolution of the photo, but basically what you're looking for is just a blob of color without any details, something like that. And after that, you're gonna change the blend mode to either soft light or color. In this case, I'll choose colors and decrease the opacity. Here's the before, here's the after. It makes the subject blend in with the background a lot more. And I've also prepared a third example for you to show you the other technique that you can use to color match. And we're gonna color match using the gradient map this time. So just as before, create a black solid and put it to color blend mode just to create a check layer for the light values and let's start matching the light first. So I'm creating a curves and clipping it to my subject again which happens to be me very surprisingly. And I'm just trying to match my light with the light of the background and I'm using the tip that I taught you before. I like to zoom out a lot uh, when I'm doing this so that I can see the photo without the distraction of the details. And it seems to be working now. My light is matching with the light of the background but the right side of my face, it's a little brighter. There was some light shining under my face when I was taking the picture and I don't need that because I don't have a light source in my photo that is shining from the right side so I need to fix it as well so I'm gonna drop another curves just to darken up that part of my face and let's bring down the lightness and also I hit ctrl I invert the mask get the brush and start painting on that part of my face just to darken it and, and make the whole face even Now let's create the check layer for colors, which is again a 50% solid color layer and set it to luminosity blend mode. And then again, if you can't see clearly what's going on, drop a curves on top of it and give it some contrast by creating something like this. So you can now see the colors fortunately. And this time to match the colors, we're gonna use a gradient map. And this is a very efficient way in some cases and it can really help you out to color match different value parts of the image with the background. And the way we do that is quite simple. Let me turn off the check layer so we can sample the colors. I'm creating a gradient map and clipping it to my subject and let's sample the colors. For the left side of the gradient editor, we're gonna sample a dark shadow. Pay attention that it should not be black. And for the right side, we're gonna create a bright color, which represents the highlights. And you can make the color even brighter. It's not a problem. 
and then again pay attention that it should not be white and we're gonna also create a mid-tone by sampling a mid-tone color from the background and you can adjust the color on the gradient editor usually three colors is enough but you can go as high as you want but i don't really recommend going any higher than five colors since that will really get complicated in this way by sampling shadow midtone and highlight colors from the background we actually colorize our subject with the colors of the background and as i said you can go uh, as a high up to five colors but more than that really gets complicating and after you have set up your gradient map you can change the blend mode to either one of these multiply soft light color and sometimes it's even good to keep it on normal and in this case i think i will put the blend mode to soft light so let's try soft light and decrease the opacity to make the effect look more natural And that was it for today's video, I hope you enjoyed and if you did drop a like and a comment. Yeah mate, that's how we do, just go on and watch any of these two videos now, hopefully it'll help you out a little bit more. Till next week, peace out.